Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This is our That's No Moon Base, the series in which we take viewer submitted modules, utilities, and put them together to form one getting fairly massive moon base on the surface of the moon right next to the Neil Armstrong Memorial. This is episode 10, which would usually indicate that there's going to be something special going on, and there kind of is, except it's more of a precursor to something special, because I've just hit 50,000 subscribers. Which is ridiculous. There's, there's, no, there's no reason that I should particularly have that number of subscribers, nor, I suppose, at that level, does it mean an awful amount? It's more about the active people, the active subscribers, and I can't really say how many of them there are, but you watching this right now, it's just to say that you are valuable to me. <laughs> I, res I really appreciate the fact that you watch my videos and you support me in my endeavour to play games and educate people at the same time. And um, 5,000 subscribers just by itself is quite a massive milestone. So, uh, as per usual, I say usual, it's only happened once before, when I did, when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I did a special in which I flew the, the, sh the flights that should have been on the interplanetary fleet. And for 50,000 subscribers, I want to do something similar. So, I want it to be a self-contained mission, which has got some significance. Not because I necessarily don't want to give anything away, but for other reasons, such as I haven't thought of one, I don't particularly want to say what that mission is going to be right now. But hopefully it's going to be something good, and hopefully it's going to be something that you all will enjoy, because that's the least I can do. The very least that I can do to pay you back for enjoying and positively feedbacking on these videos is to provide you with videos that you enjoy. Recently, not been happening so much, less so that you aren't enjoying them and more so that I haven't been really providing the videos. I've uh, I've had school and I've had obligation changes and things and basically what it boils down to is that I've been finding, and this isn't going to change very soon, although it will change in the future fairly soon, I've been finding that I've had less and less time to actually record videos in. It's not that my interest has lacked at all, what, on the contrary. <laughs> my interest keeps on getting more and more and more and more until I can think of a word. It keeps on getting bigger uh, because KSP's got such massive amounts of things to do in it. But yes, I have got a problem that uh, not really finding any time to do videos in. Will be changing though because it is now the summer holidays, or not now, it is soon the summer holidays. I'm nearly nearly away from uh, my obligations as education, and I can get about and do some more space missions. But uh, that will be in about four weeks time, <laughs> because I'm going on holiday to Spain. I'm going on holiday to Spain for two weeks at the start of the summer holidays with my family, which means I'm going to be hard pressed to provide you with videos. What I'm intending to do is, to the period running up to that, I'm intending to pre-record some videos and then upload them beforehand and release them as public during my holiday. Um, and you know, hopefully I'm going to be able to provide some videos, but it isn't going to be quite to the level that you might really expect. Please just uh, bear with me with that. After that, I've got four weeks at home where I can be free to record and live stream, which is something that's going to be happening. I am going to be live streaming. Need to test that out. Remind itself, I do need to test that out. But um, yes, I'm going to be doing something, something fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun in those four weeks. So if you can hang on till then, uh, I'll try and do what I can. Anyway, but anyway... Let's get back to the video and the matter at hand, which is that we have had a submission sent in to the That's No Moon base, and it's this shuttle, the Tricorn 11B, which I asked for. I asked for a utility that could ferry fuel and kerbals down from orbit and back up to orbit. And that's exactly what we've got. And when it lands, it can dock with a rover at the standardised height, which is good, because it means I'll be able to refuel it from the fuel reserve via the rovers that I've got around the place and the fuel reserve which we put in there in the last episode. 
So the base is actually coming together, we've actually got some sort of purpose to it now. Because I can move Kerbals, I can land Kerbals there, I can move them up into orbit, I can bring them back down, and once I've run out of fuel, I can take a rover, I can go over to our fuel reserve, I can siphon some fuel into the rover, transport fuel, fuel carrier thing, I can move the fuel from the rover and move the rover over to the shuttle, dock with the shuttle, transfer the fuel, and I can take more Kerbals up into orbit, and, and that's all there really is to it at the moment. Um, there's not really any underlying purpose at all, actually. It's still a bit of a collection of buildings, but we are going to hopefully find something useful to do. Which is hard without mods, and I'm not going to use mods, so... I haven't really spoken on the matter for quite a while, but I love mods. I think mods are brilliant. I just don't have time to use them when I think it's a good decision not to use mods in these videos. I think, and I've seen evidence for this as well in the comments and the feedback and things, that using just vanilla parts in my videos is appealing to a wider variety of people. Um, because it can be hard to keep track of every single mod that I'm using, and if you want to emulate what I'm doing, then you don't you know that you can as long as you have the full game. Just as a side note, for any of you saying, what mods are you using in this video? I'm not using any mods, I'm using vanilla parts. This is the full version of the game that you need to buy. The demo is the demo, right? Just just rem remember that. So here we have the launch stage which I built in the previous video, and there was a bit of a fail. I, I was venting, the I was testing the engine, right? I was testing the engine, that's what that was. That wasn't totally a staging mishap, no. So uh, yes, this launch stage that we built, it can deliver, what was it, a 80, 90 ton payload into orbit around Kerbin? Hopefully it's going to do a bit more than that, seeing as our payload right now is probably 70 tons or something. Although we do have an intermediate stage, which is, which is and has more than enough fuel and more than enough delta-v change in velocity to get us out to the moon, to land us basically on the moon, to dock with a station. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of fuel in this new design, which is really nice. And unfortunately, I can't use the pre-made thing. In the previous video, when I made this spacier launch system or stage, I developed it with the intention of just being able to stack payloads on top of it, so I don't have to build this over and over again. I can save it as its own craft file and I can move things on top. You can't, or at least I can't, because you guys are building your crafts and then giving me their files. So in the vanilla game, I can't just take one craft, another craft file, and stick them together with super glue. You have to actually have one of them and then build on top of that. You can't take two already built ships and put them together, which is a shame, and it's something that's been solved by the sub-assembly loader, which is a mod. There comes a fine line between using mods and not using mods, and it's really not a fine line at all because it's a boolean system, yes or no, but I really would like to use the sub-assembly loader. There are some mods which are just too good to really go and missed, and that they only improve the game. Literally, only improve the game. There's nothing you can actually do wrong with that mod. There's no way you can cheat people out of a full vanilla experience by just making it more logical on how to build ships. Now, I'm not going to use the mod. I'm not going to use the mod because I don't have time to track the mod's progress. I, I probably do have time, but I'm, I'm going to tell myself for now that I don't have time. I don't have time to keep it up to date. And, um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not going to. Apart from the reasons I've already said that I'm not going to use mods. But there's going to come a time when I am going to use mods. For whatever reason that may be, I'd like some feedback to see whether you'd like that or not. Now, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it seems that people who comment are always the people in favour of mods. Which is odd. And it poses the question, Harvey, how do you know that people who don't want, excuse me, how do you know that people don't want mods if anyone who comments, who leaves vid feedback, only ever wants mods? It's because what I said isn't true, and it's because that there are plenty of people who say that we shouldn't use mods. Um, but no, it's mainly in the fact that people ask 
people constantly are in a state of confusion as to what mods are being used and where they can find them. Even on vanilla parts, like I've said, and I've seen it on other people's videos and things. It's, it's, it seems like such a bother. And there's also, there's over, also other evidence which uh, I think has made my videos more popular as, popular as a result of not using mods. But um, no, it's, uh, it's something I would like to do in the future, so give me your opinions. Give me your opinions. I would like to hear them. If you're one of the sort of people who doesn't usually comment on videos, and I'm one of those, I, I for all manner of purposes and other such words, I generally don't comment on my own videos, or I don't comment on other people's videos, I feel more inclined to comment on my own to uh, help people out and to say witty things. But um, yeah, if you're one of those people watching this who has commented before on videos, but doesn't really feel that they like to comment that much, please do comment. Make this the one exception. This is probably one of the few times I'll ask you. Just tell me what you think about mods. Even if it's simple yes mods or no mods, just leave me some feedback. It really does help. So back to the matter at hand, we have got into an orbit around the moon after doing our transfer with this uh, big skipper engine, which I love. I still love, even though it's not as efficient as efficient as is really useful for interplanetary missions, especially for moon transfers, it is wonderful. The increased thrust, meaning that you don't have to wait so long for everything, so good. I really like that. People don't seem to value the, uh, value that which is lack of time. I don't know what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that people seem to value efficiency above all else, but having increased thrust is really nice. Getting burns done quickly vastly improves your experiences with the game. Or maybe it doesn't, depending on how you like to play. But I like to I like to get the boring bins boring bits done quickly. Unless I'm taken by time over a particular thing for a particular reason. So we've got into orbit around the moon using this engine which I seem overly fond of. And now we are trying to place our reticule over our other corresponding yellow reticule and not having much success, we don't seem to be getting particularly anywhere particularly fast. So we're going to start burning brokerage, start burning towards the station rather than simply ca cancelling out our relative velocity in, a, in every other direction but in its direction. So now we're burning towards it and we're going to get closer. So this is a shuttle, and as I said at the start of the video, its purpose is supposed to be to ferry kerbals and fuel, if required, to ferry kerbals and fuel up and down from our base to the station. Now, I'm in a bit of a dilemma here, because I've got a load of fuel in this skipper engine stage that I would love to put onto the station, but I can't, really. The, the station has got full fuel capacity and it's not got room for any more, and I can't dock this engine straight onto the station except via the shuttle. The shuttle which I want to use right now and go down on the moon, because it'll be a shame to end this episode with me just putting this thing in orbit, so I do want to bring it down. I do want to put it down on the moon and actually use it and add it to our collection of utilities down there. But um, at the same time, I still feel some sort of obligation to dock with this station here. I don't know why, it's not really going to achieve anything, but there are times when I just feel like doing things. And uh, this is one of them. Also I suppose it does prove whether or not the thing, the thing can dock with any ease, because the only docking ports that are really compatible right now are the slightly small junior docking ports on the side of the station. Luckily, these junior docking ports have got st are mounted on the end of struts. Thank you so much to uh, whoever it was that made the station. I can't remember who that was, but um, yeah, mounting things out onto struts so they stick out is actually really useful for docking things. Doesn't make it any really that much easier when you're docking this uh, unwieldy big payload, but it does make um, it does make matching two ships together that weren't designed to dock together specifically, it makes docking them a hell of a lot easier. So that's what we're going to try and do now. We're going to try and use this strut and use this junior port that is randomly on the bottom of our payload or on the bottom tank and we're going to try bring it in slowly and 
just almost closely line it up and the thing starts shaking. We turn off advanced SES and turn off RCS and the thing continues shaking until we dock. There we go, everything's docked and everything's shaking again. And it's all quite nice. And uh, yeah, so here we are, we've we've got this half massive fuel tank left with a skipper engine, but there's nothing, there's nowhere we can put it. So, now that we're here, we might as well, I don't know, test out the shuttle, take a guy out of our station. We want to keep one in there for reasons. We want to keep one in there, but luckily we have another one, so we'll take him out, we'll put him onto the side of our shuttle, and uh, that's really it. I suppose. There's nothing in particular here that we really have left to do. We've got our Kerbal hanging merrily off the side of that big fuel tank there. And uh, I suppose it's time just to really warp around and hopefully get onto the side that our base is. And hopefully it will be daylight when that happens, because I don't really fancy warping around the entire time until it is. So we're just going to take a, a few screenshots perhaps. That would be a really nice screenshot. Please say I move this into a screenshot. Please? No, I don't, do I? No. Uh, I'm going to have to do something, because I would like that to be the screenshot. Unless I make the, the thumbnail, that is. I'd like that to be the thumbnail, unless I use a uh, picture of the entire base. But anyway, we undock this thing from the station. We point the station back to north so that it continues on. You know, this station's got two engines mounted on the side, and they're intended for to use as a reverse cannon. So you launch Kerbals back down towards the surface. Unfortunately, it's very hard to make Kerbals survive that. And, uh, it's, yeah, that's, it's fairly, fairly difficult. Just read it, take it as read, that I've tried and I've failed. And, unfortunately, the sun seems to be on the opposite side of Kerbin, or opposite side of the moon. We just swapped to Kerbin, which made me think of it. It's on the opposite side of the moon to where we currently are, so we're going to have to land in darkness. Not a massive deal, we do have some fairly big floodlights on the base of our thing, I do. I think we do. But uh, we can use our skipper engine, that's the one advantage of not having got rid of any of that fuel. We can use up the fuel and bring ourselves down onto the moon with it. That's not really testing the capabilities of the utility, because it's supposed to be able to rely on its own fuel to get down and back up and down and back up several times, hopefully. You never know, we may need that kind of capability, but the increased thrust of this engine does help us out without, um, it does help us get the job done fairly quickly, which is always nice, as I've said earlier. 3,000 meters off the, off of sea level, our utility is about 4 kilometers away, we're going to try and bring this down, we don't want to cancel out our relative, uh, our lateral velocity too much. And now that we're down roughly at the safe, safe altitude, we can detach from our skipper engine, leave that, unfortunately, to crash below, wasting all the precious fuel that was inside it. But, you know, in the, at the end of the day, there's going to be more missions, there's going to be more chance for more fuel to be put down. Getting fuel here really isn't that big of a deal. As we proved with our fuel reserve, maybe we should land another one of those. Maybe we should. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe. Maybe I should start thinking about what I want next. Maybe I should do a lot of things. Am I going to do any of them? Probably not. So we're going to bring this thing down. 900 meters above sea level, 700 meters or 600 now above our utilities. Sea level not necessarily meaning ground level of... Oh, excuse me, I'm burping a lot. Sea level not necessarily me meaning ground level, of course. And as I turn our craft around, I realize, oh, it would be quite a good idea to have the docking port that we're going to dock our rovers with facing the inside of our base. You know, so that the rovers don't have to drive all the way around the shuttle to get here. So we're going to put our engines down to a throttle that is just a bit of cruising, a bit of levitating, and we're going to, after a minute or so, we'll start spinning around. Just get down lower, not burning retrograde necessarily because we are actually moving in the direction of the station, getting a little bit closer. But the markers have disappeared now, we can see all, your, all our utilities, majority of them without markers. And now we're going to settle down, we're going to hover and try and twist this round so that the docking port is pointing towards the centre of the station. Or of the base of the That's No Moon base. And we bring it down, and we land. 
This thing has got like 12 landing legs on it, so landing is actually really, really easy. You just plonk it down there and it seems ca content and happy just to sit there on its own in the dark. And you know what I was saying? I was saying that our base is growing steadily massive, and it is. We've got, this is the 10th episode, so we've probably got, what, 9 utilities here? I'm not entirely sure, but we do have a fair amount of utilities. Hey, we even have some random debris. You know how we need that. And that's the end. That's basically the end of our episode today. Again, sorry about the lack of videos. I'm trying. I am really trying, but it's hard with other obligations I've got. But um, that is all for this episode. And no, I'm not going to ask you for what I want you to submit next, because I've got some ideas. And as with the 11th episode of Challenging YouTubers, I'm thinking the 11th episode of That's No Moon Base might be my own chance to uh, put a utility down here. Seeing as I've got one perspective of what I want this thing to end with, it might be quite a good idea just to add something of my own. So thank you very much for watching this episode of That's No Moon Base. If you liked the video, please do like the video, and I'll see you all next time.